Today we're going to be making some picture frames using a sled that I built in a recent video. These ones are pretty cool because they have some contrasting wood splines. Let's check it out. Welcome to this episode of Home Built Workshop. My name is Jeff and welcome to my tiny shop. Today, it's picture frame day here at the shop, and in a previous video, I made this dedicated picture frame sled with exactly this project in mind. Today, I need to make two different frames. I'm gonna use the exact same construction, it's just gonna be different sizes. One of them's gonna be for an 11 by 14 piece of artwork, and the other one needs to fit an eight by 10, kind of your standard picture size. The first thing I need to do is prepare the base stock, but I really needed to determine how much of this I was gonna need, so I sat down in Fusion 360, a couple of minutes and just did a rough drawing of these particular frames. That way I could determine the actual length once we cut our miters on there and I could figure out exactly how much material I needed to get ready. I've picked out this piece of cherry that's going to give me plenty of material to make both of these frames from. The problem is since it's a little bit longer stick of wood it's going to be a bit of a challenge to rip this down in the shop. I could move the saw outside and do it out there, but to save from having to wrestle the saw around, that's really why I went to make a drawing for this because now I can get the dimensions, cut this piece down first, then rip down my strips and run it on the router table. Let's go. I'm ripping these down to an inch and a half wide. I think that's a pretty good dimension for picture frames. Got a little bit of burnage there. I think it's time for a new blade. With my base stock cut down, now I need to cut the rabbit that's gonna accept the glass and the artwork in the backer. Now you could do this on the table saw by making two cuts, one with a shallow cut in this orientation and then another shallow cut going this way which would cut the waste piece out of there. That might be the quicker option, but on my little tiny table saw, it's really kind of sketchy making cuts like that, and I try to avoid it if at all possible. I'm gonna do it with the router table using a straight cutting bit in my fence. I'm gonna slowly work my way up to the desired height until I get to the depth that I need. Use whichever method works the best for you with the tools you have in your shop. Next, using a 45 degree chamfer bit, I'm gonna put a small chamfer on both the outside edges of the stock. I feel that it's easier to do the chamfer at this step because the pieces aren't glued together, but keep in mind though, if you have to sand your frame too much, you do risk sanding away some of the chamfer and you may need to redo it after you sand. And sanding is what I'm gonna do next. I clamped all the pieces together so that I could sand them all at the same time. This helped out a lot. And now it's time to put this sled to work. I'm gonna start off with the pieces for the 11 by 14 frame. I'll start out with the two short pieces for the 11 by 14 frame. First, we're going to just use the side that does not have the stop block. Depending on which way you have your sled built, could be either side, but for mine it's the right side, but I'm a lefty. We're always gonna make our cuts with the rabbit down and it's going to overlap the fence. So the actual fence is going to ride right in here and this is going to overhang. We'll make our first cut at the end of the board then we'll set our stop block for 11 inches then we'll turn the piece, butt it up against the stop block and then make our second cut. Since building this jig, I've clipped off the corner of the stop block. That helps me align it exactly with my measurement. One of the coolest parts about this jig is the way the stop block is designed. You actually use the measurements from your artwork and the stop block makes up for the extra length caused by the miters. I save all of these little pieces. All the scraps from this cherry will end up in the smoker at some point. Try to use everything. Now with all my pieces cut, if I compare the lengths, they are exactly the same. Thanks to the adjustable stop block, 
yeah, these frames are going to turn out good. Now we just need to add some glue, clamp these up. There's our second frame out of the clamps, ready to move on to the next step. And what exactly is that next step? Now we are going to reinforce these miter joints using some splines cut into the side. We're going to use a jig to cut this on the table saw, basically cutting some slots in there that we can then glue in some strips of wood, making these joints nice and strong. Now I have made frames where I have not reinforced the joints, and depending on the joinery, you can get away with that. But for a miter joint, it's really a good idea to reinforce these miters. Now, if you didn't want to do splines, you could do dowels in from the back or dowels in from the side. There's a bunch of different ways. Basically, anything you can do to add some glue surface to this miter. To cut the slots for the splines, I'm going to use this wonky jig right here. I built this quite a while back for a box project I was working on where I needed to spline the edges, but it's going to work just the same for a picture frame. It's just some plywood glued together at 90 degrees. I'll be able to take my frame, set it in here like this. It'll hold it at a perfect 45 degree angle. We can pass it across the blade of the saw, cutting that spline. What we'll do is flip it. 180 degrees to make sure our slot is centered and to get it the right thickness. This particular jig is made with a notch right here that fits over the fence on my saw. Really simple. I've seen a ton of different designs of this. You can build it in a ton of different ways. I don't have a particular video on building this particular jig because it was really intended to be kind of a one-off jig, but if you just do some searching online, you can find tons of versions of it. So let's cut some splines. I'm raising the height of my blade to cut about one inch into the corner of the frame. I've got the fence positioned so that the blade hits about the center of the frame, and I'll make my first four cuts on the same side of the frame. Then I'll turn my frame around 180 degrees and make the cuts again. This will make sure that the cut is exactly centered on the frame. Then I'll check the fit of my splines. In my case, the slot was just a little bit too narrow, so I'm going to nudge the fence over just a little bit and make all those cuts again. This will make the slot wider. You want to go slow here, take your time, and sneak up on the fit. Now since I used my regular combination table saw blade, I didn't switch it out for one with a flat tooth profile. The slots have a V shape in there due to the shape of the blade, so I need to clean that up. I just use a thin stick that's about the size of the groove with some sticky back sandpaper on there to sand those ridges nice and smooth. This only takes a few seconds and is really easy to do. Now you may be wondering why I made these slots so wide. You could just make one pass and glue in a thin strip of wood. You wouldn't really have a whole lot of cleanup or anything, but I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna use a spline that is a laminate of maple and walnut. I think it's gonna be a cool look. Once we glue that in there, it's gonna look really nice. Once the glue on the splines is dry, I just use the bandsaw to quickly trim them as flush as I can. A flush trim saw of some sort would work just as well. This was just a little bit quicker. Then I'll sand the splines flush using a sanding block with a 90 degree edge guide to keep the edge 90 degrees. I'll follow this up with everyone's favorite process, a little bit of hand sanding just to make sure everything is nice and smooth.
And now I can apply the finish, which is going to be a really simple finish consisting of a mixture of polyurethane, mineral spirits, and boiled linseed oil. I've got a video where I make this finish if you're interested in checking that out. There's a link in the description. Once the finish is dry, now all we need to do is install a hanger on the back and we're pretty much done with these frames. But first, before we do that, I want to share a quick little story and a piece of advice for you. After letting the finish dry overnight, it still was a little bit tacky in the morning, so I thought that, well, I could set it outside in the shade where some air could get to it and it would dry it a little bit faster. Sounded like a great idea, right? So I set these outside, kind of forgot about them. And as the day moved on, the sun started beating down on these things, and I bet you can't guess what happened. It caused the finish to get all bubbly and really it looked horrible. I couldn't save it. I ended up having to re-sand it back down to smooth everything out and reapplying the finish. So, if you're going to put your pieces outside where they can dry, make sure that there is zero chance of any sunlight hitting them. The finish doesn't like that. There's pro tip of the day. Let's install these hangers. Pliers work really good for those tiny little nails. You don't hit your fingers. And with that, this part of the project is complete. The next step would be, of course, to add your artwork, except, as I mentioned before, these are made as a gift, and the artwork that's going in there is some sort of a museum-type print, and it doesn't take a glass or anything, so I don't have any of the artwork to put in there, but our frames are done. If you're going to add some artwork, you would, of course, add the glass, your artwork, and a backer. Secure it with some brads or flex points or something along the back of the frame, and you're ready to hang this sucker on the wall, but I'm ready to give these things away. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this project. Really kind of fun to play around with a new sled and making some splines and stuff in there. Just some different techniques and different ways you can make picture frames. I've got a bunch of other videos for making picture frames. I'm going to put a link in the description to a playlist with all kinds of different picture frame videos that I've done. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. We'll see you next time. Always get covered in glue. Always. It's what we deal with. <laughs> That's funny right there. Hey, look, it's an end table. No way. I even have gloves. <laughs> Write this one down in the history books, folks. <laughs>